wash my hands. Okay, the first thing I want to do is, can you tell me your full name? Leah. Leah, and do you know, can you tell me where you are? And do you know what day today is? Excellent. AAO times three. Can you just move you up? That's good. Get out of your way. <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a uh, head to toe assessment. Okay? Yes, I do. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check your scalp. I'm looking for ichymosis, pediculosis, and alopecia. Any lesions, everything is good, no pain. Gloves off. Okay, Miss Leah, what I'd like to do is if you can make a big smile for me. Very good. Puff your cheeks out. Excellent. That's cranial nerve 7, which is a facial nerve. Can I get you to close your eyes, please? When I touch your face, would you just let me know? Good. That's cranial nerve 5, which is a trigeminal. And now, what I'd like to do is. Just open your eyes nice and wide for me. About five millimeter. The sclera is clear. Conjunctiva, <laughs> conjunctiva. I can't say that. Conjunctiva is pink and moist. If I get you to look at me, okay. The uh, pupils are equal and round. And they are reactive to light. What I'd like you to do is focus on my pen. Now from here, I want you to focus on the pen, and I want you to focus on Miss Georgia back there. Sorry. Okay. Then back to the pen, and we're checking for accommodation. And just keep focusing on my pen, checking for conversions. Okay. And uh, just that part again, because I missed something. We're just going to focus on the pen, and we're checking for conversions. Okay. Now we check the six cardinal gate. Yeah. <laughs> just follow the pen without moving your head, please. Okay, and that's checking um, cranial nerves 3, 6, and 4, which is the ocular motor, the abducens, and the uh, trochlear, and the movements were smooth and symmetrical. And that's all the for the eyes. So for the eyes, we're going to go to the ear. I'm going to step behind you. I'm going to see a two-syllable word. If you can repeat it for me. Okay. I'm going to go to the other side, do the same. That's checking um, <laughs> cranial nerve 8, which is the acoustic, or the vestibular cochlear nerve. <laughs> now we're going to go uh, grab something off her breakfast tray. Have her close her eyes first. Take it, hold it on her nose. Can you just tell me what you smell? Chocolate. Chocolate. Very good. And that's checking cranial nerve 1, which is the olfactory nerve. Right. Now what I'd like you to do is open your mouth nice and wide. Okay, ah. It's like Tarzan. Really wide, really wide. Okay, she's very shy about that. Uh, the uvula is going up and down, the movement. Uh, the mucosa is pink and moist. You just stick your tongue out, moving from side to side, checking the lateral movement. That's checking cranial nerves 9, 10, and 12, which are the glossopharyngeal, the vagus, and the hypoglossal. All right. uh, that's all for, for the mouth. We're going to move to the shoulders. Can you just shrug your shoulders up and down? Very good. That's checking the trapezius muscle, the sternocleoid mastoid, which is uh, assessing cranial nerve 11, which is a spinal accessory. Now we're going to move to the neck. First thing we're going to do is inspect for jugular vein distension, none noted. Then we're going to palpate the carotid artery. 
which is two plus palp easily palpable. And then we're going to check for carotid bruit using the bell side of our stethoscope. And I need you to take a breath and hold it. And release. And again on this side. Okay, very good. You're going to check for, make sure the trachea is midline. We get you to swallow, please. Excellent. From there, we're going to go down to the, uh, the thorax, and we're going to check for lung sounds. We're going to check the... Uh, you're making too many notes. We're going to check the, the, the bronchial which is just above the, the clavicle on the side of the trachea from both sides. Make sure you listen for a full inspiration and expiration because if you hear any sounds, you get the end of the expiration. The bronchial vesicular and, and the vesicular. The two here, tell me again. Bronchial vesicular. Okay. And then we're going to have her hug her pillow, lean forward. Just show me one time how you're going to instruct your patient to have her do it. One time. The breath. The breath in and out. Okay. Instruct her how okay. to do it. I you want to have your mouth open. And take a deep breath in and exhale. Very good. Okay. On the back, we're, we're going to be checking the bronchial vesicular, which is more towards the center line, but not down the spine of the back, and then the vesicular on both sides. Stay there, please. I'm going to ask you to scoot over just a, just a hair. That's good. Put this down. I'm going to check for a bilateral chest expansion. If you could breathe in deeply and exhale. Once more. Very good. You can go ahead and scoot back. This good outward and upward movement. We're going to check for the uh, AP which is less than the transverse, we're going to have the barrel chest, or COPD. And at this point, if it's an elderly patient, I'm going to check the skin turtle on the chest. For a younger person, I'll, I'll check on the arm. And I believe that's it for the thorax. Right, from here, we're going to check. Next thing we're going to check is um, heart. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay you back to that. <laughs> Are you comfortable? How's that? Good? Good. You're about eight minutes in. You're doing great. Okay. We're gonna, the first place we're going to check with the diaphragm of the stethoscope is the aorta, which is at the second intercostal space on the right uh, sternal border. And we're listening, listening for S2. It should be louder. Then we're going to go to the second intercostal space on the left sternal border. That is a pulmonic, also S2. Go down to the third intercostal space, which is Herb's point, and that should be equal sounds. Go down to the fourth intercostal, and that's the um, tricuspid, which should be S1. And then we're going to find the mitral, which is at the midclavicular line at uh, intercostal space 5, which is right up under here. If she's very well in that, I'll ask her to assist, <laughs> you know, which I don't want to embarrass her. Very good. All right? And that's it for, for the heart. While she's laying down, I'm going to recline you just a little bit more. I'm going to check the abdomen, <coughs> looking for any abdominal distension. We're going to divide the abdomen into four quadrants. We're going to start by auscultating the lower right quadrant, because that's where the ileocecal valve is. We're going to move in a clockwise direction. We're listening for 5 to 35 bowel sounds. It's above 35, it's hy hyperactive. Below 35, it's hypoactive. If it's, if it's zero, then it would be absent, and we'd have to listen for five full minutes to count the sounds. Um, after I'm done auscultating, I'm going to palpate each one, looking for any type of grimacing, any tenderness or rigidity in the abdomen, and check each quadrant as well. I'm going to ask her um, how her appetite is and the vomiting. Have you had any vomiting? How's your appetite? Good. Good. Uh, last bowel movement. 
Um, two minutes ago. Last menstrual period? Last Yeah. <laughs> and and <I'm> TMI. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> and then uh, also the last uh, self breast exam, if it's a male testicular exam. All right. And that's it for the, the trunk of the body. We're going to move on to the extremities. The extremities, first we're going to do is check the skin color and temperature. And then we're going to check signs of circulation. We're going to check both extremities equally. We're going to check the, the pulses and the radio and the brachial. Should be two plus, easily palpable. Check the capillary refill. Should come back in less than two seconds. Uh, we're going to check bilateral grip strength. If you squeeze my fingers, very good. And at, at this point, what I would do is do the same on the legs. Now wait, we check for skin color and temperature. We're also going to look for any type of edema. If there's edema, we're going to do that pitting test. Um, we're going to check the pulses in the foot, which will be the posterior tibial, dorsal pedis, the salus pedis, the popliteal, and the femoral pulse. We're going to do the same type of uh, strength testing on the bottom of the feet when we push against your hands. And that checks the, the circulation. We're going to go back for a range of range of motion and what I'll do is I'll ask her and we're doing the pulse checks on both sides every point. Uh, if I can get you to mimic the, the movements of this arm with your other arm, we're going to check for range of motion. We have flexion and extension of the shoulder, abduction, adduction, flexion, extension, supination, pronation. I believe that's it for the upper extremities. For the lower extremities, I'm going to check for, and don't do it at the same time as I do it, but abduction, adduction, and you do it with that leg. Inversion, eversion, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. And I'm going to check the Holman sign, which is to lift up here, push against the, the toe, and lift, looking for pains, just checking for a deep vein thrombosis. Once I've checked all the range of motion, I'm going to ask her to roll over to her right side, assist if necessary. And we're going to check for skin integrity. We're going to look for any, any pressure points, bony prominences, the back of the head, the scapula, sacral area, the back of the knees, and the heel. And make sure everything is, is look good, no pressure sores or anything like that. Roll back. How you feel? Good. Good. How many notes did you take? <laughs>